YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with the Buccaneers preview. Some things to watch, some questions for Tampa Bay heading into the 2024 season. You'll find a playlist on the channel with all these videos. As you see down here, we only have two teams left, the Chiefs and the Vikings. Uh, so excited to finish this up and get to more content as the season approaches. Cannot wait. Uh, but for the Bucks. Yeah, the biggest thing is, do they continue on where they left off? They were getting better and better. Does Baker kind of continue off that? Or do they kind of get figured out? Or or do they kind of get exposed without Dave Canales, who was a huge piece of their offense coordinator last year? And that's kind of the number one thing or the number three thing. But the first thing we'll talk about here is how will that affect them? Dave Canales going from him to Liam Cohen, who's been kind of back and forth from the NFL in, in college football, you know, is with Kentucky for a little bit. Didn't really work out the one year with the Rams, but uh, I think people around the NFL really speak highly of him. They think he's an NFL uh, offensive coach, but Dave Canales was so good for them last year. I thought it was an incredible hire for the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, so what was, you know, there was so many reasons for the Buccaneers success, you know, or, you know, the reason that they were better than everyone expected. But if you made me pick one, I thought Dave Canales was the biggest, the biggest, uh, reason I, I really do some people might disagree but um I, I thought he was a big reason for the success of Baker Mayfield and so was Baker Mayfield but uh, and then him having weapons but uh, I thought he did a really good job calling that offense and game planning um you know so it is a tough loss they do take a hit losing him but that's the biggest question you know how much we think they might miss him but how much do they actually miss him how does it look going from Canales to going going the 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 biggest positive here is, you know, maybe we see it all the time. We see it all the time where new coaches or, you know, whether it's head coach or offensive coordinator, they look great. And then the next year they kind of get figured out. Everyone's kind of get another crack at them. You know, they're, they're, there's more tape out there on them. So they're a little more prepared. So they kind of get figured out. But maybe that's not going to be a thing. Now they all have a whole new offense coordinator. Of course, the Buccaneers probably rather have Dave Canales, but it's kind of the, all the same players. They've added some, a lot of guys with upside, pretty balanced roster. We'll talk more in depth about those things in a second, but now they add a new offense coordinator, so it could be more fresh. It could be more of a fresh look of this growing offense, so that could be the positive there, but that's something we're, we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to wait and see how that affects them, how they are going from a, a good one last year in Dave Canales to Liam Cohen. Uh, number two, kind of touched on that. They they have really solid balance, balance throughout this roster. That was another reason they were pretty successful last year, and I think they're even more balanced this year, and it's something that people don't really talk about. You got a solid quarterback in Baker. You know, he's not elite, but you got a solid quarterback that really stepped up last year. We, we, we know he has that talent in him. Looking at the Oklahoma days, looking at the early, you know, the first year at the Browns, uh, first year with the Bucks. So does he kind of continue off that? Is there more chemistry that, uh, you know, with Baker Mayfield in this group in the second year? Uh, but obviously they have really good receivers. They, you know, they actually are pretty deep. I love the draft pick of Jalen McMillan too, but you have stud receivers and Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh, Trey Palmer uh, looked like he could be a factor as well. Uh, offensive line was kind of a question. You know, the last Brady year was a big question. And then last year it was kind of a question going into the year and it wasn't great. It needed to be better, but it was better than we thought. And now you got a bunch of guys that are just still young, going to step up. Um, they add Graham Barton in the mix. You know, Tristan Wirfs, a star offensive tackle. So th this group is starting to come together, and it's only going to go up from here. So that's a good sign. I think the offense line is better than it was last year. It should be at least. Then you go to defense. Um, run defense is always very solid, led by Vita Vea, uh, linebacker group. You know it'll be solid. K.J. Britt just kind of getting going as he kind of took over for Devin White towards the end of last year as the year went on, really. Um, not just the end, but, um, you know, and obviously Levante David. You know, maybe they're waiting for some pass rushers to step up. I think they got some young guys that really could step up. Um, you know, we'll talk more about those guys, but... Uh, and the the secondary is really solid, led by those safeties. Antoine Whitfield, one of the very best, if not the best. And they add Jordan Whitehead back, who's very solid. We'll talk about him more in this video as well. Uh, Jamel Dean, you know, could McCollum step up a corner? Uh, you know, there's there's spots where yeah, they can get a little better, or yeah, maybe they don't have a, a ton of star player. We didn't talk about running back either. They got a one-two punch with Rashad White, who broke out last year. And I love Bucky Irving, uh, but th there's really no spots where it's like. 
that's a problem, a major hole. They don't have, they don't have that. You know, there's a little bit of a question at cornerback too. I suppose you know, do they have a guy that steps up to replace Shaq Barrett? You know, he wasn't playing all that great recently. You know, still good, obviously, but um, you know that it's a really balanced roster, and that's going to help them win football games where they can win with the with the offense or the defense, and they, you know, they could be good enough on the same days. Um, so that's something that's really not talked about a ton. And then number one, when I look through this roster, I see a bunch of a ton of players that what should they do? They only should get better. They only should progress. Baker just kind of got going last year. I know some people think maybe, maybe he can kind of come back down to earth. He can kind of get figured out. But, man, more chemistry. The talent's in there. He only should get better. The receivers should only get better with him. Like I said, they've added Jalen McMillan. You know, Trey Palmer should only get better. Running backs Rashad White just got going last year. It makes sense that he would only get better. Bucky Irvin's a rookie. I think he could be really good in this group. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Kyron Williams, um, who end up being better than expected for the Rams. You know, tough. Uh, breaks a lot of tackles, you know, can catch the ball and go. Uh, we talked about the offensive line. Wirfs is getting better and better elite tackle, but they have guys that are kind of just getting going throughout that rest of that offense line, um, you know, j- just getting going. You know, Cody Mock being one of them, you know, and then they just added Graham Barton. So all those guys should be continuing to get better. You look at defense, um, you know, Vita Vea is a guy that's going to ball out, but Logan Hall should only get better. Joe, Joe Tryon, Yaya Diaby, who I'm a huge fan of. He had a much better rookie year than what people talk about. Like, he deserved a lot more respect from last year. We're going to talk about him more in this video. Again, KJ Britt, Britt kind of just took over Devin White last year. He's only going to get better. McCollum taking over cornerback two, most likely. Um, you know, adding Whitehead to that safety group is only going to make it better a little bit more complete kind of what it used to be that that Super Bowl year with uh you know star safety Antoine Winfield already out there so there's just so many guys they got good players veteran players that we know are going to be good and they have a bunch of players that they only could get better so it's a really good sign for them to maybe they surprise people and get even better because people really aren't expecting it I think mainly because they lose Canales maybe because people don't trust Baker in year two and then maybe because the Falcons have really stepped up in terms of their roster on paper uh, but maybe we shouldn't sleep on the Bucks for those reasons uh, top three players to watch tough to pick out three I'm gonna go Jordan Whitehead they add him back he was on the Bucks a couple years ago a few years ago he was really really solid for them it felt like a perfect duo with him and Winfield because Winfield's a guy that plays free safety or he plays up in the slot and then Whitehead could kind of do that too we saw a lot of free safety action with the Jets and um, you know, getting getting his hands in the ball. You know, he kind of added that a little bit more to his game, being a playmaker, but also plays up in the box and gets downhill. We saw a lot of that when he was with the Bucks. They blitzed him a bit. Um, you know, so he kind of he he was really good with the box, a key factor, a good pairing with Whitehead. He went away for a little bit, became a little bit more of a playmaker in the back end with the Jets. Boom, you gotta that was one of the better value signings of free agency too. I was surprised how cheap he went. Safety's Safeties in general went pretty cheap unless you're the guy that plays a million different positions and you're an elite player, you know, like a Winfield or, um, you know, a couple other guys. But, uh, yeah, but that when, uh, Whitehead's a good a good one to watch because it's that guy that we know fits with the Bucks. He plays well, but he's added a little bit more to the game. So could he actually take that secondary to another level again you know not it's Winfield's the 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 franchise piece back there the prize possession back there but white adding Whitehead could actually boost them uh, and kind of complete that group so very curious to see what Whitehead we get do we get the which was good enough the guy we last saw on the box or do we get kind of an elevated one did he actually add more to his game from being on the Jets we will see number two mentioned him a little bit Yaya Diaby he had an incredible rookie year I was a huge Diaby fan out of Louisville but I actually thought he was a little bit raw of a prospect in a way because Louisville kind of had him playing out of position at times yeah he rushed off the edge but a lot of times they had his hand in the dirt playing up uh, you know, lined up over the tackle, you know, and rushing three, you want him to be a full time. He had the physicality to do that, but you want him to be a full time edge rusher because that's where his, his traits say he is. And he had production, you know, from the edge and for him to take off and be super productive already, that's fantastic sign. So they, um, people may go like, yeah, they might need edge rushers. Like who's going to step up for Barrett. They feel that. And I agree that Diaby, uh, even if Barrett was there, would be their best pass rusher. So watch out for him. Major breakout in year two. I don't know if you can even call it that because he already shown signs of it in year one. You can call it that. But 
Really, really excited about him and his future. He's got a bright, bright future. Number one, you have to go Baker Mayfield. How is Baker Mayfield in year two? We've seen his career so far be up and down. Year one with the Browns and look like the Browns might be something. Then, um, you know, kind of went downhill. They dumped him. He struggled. He struggled really badly with the Panthers, uh, you know, and looked really good last year. Was it because the weapons? Was it because Dave Canales, you know, that good of an offensive mind? But, hey, he still has those weapons. We know he fits. He's got his confidence back. His confidence back. Um, so what big, it's going to decide everything. Um, you know, I, I think the defense, it was, it was even a stretch when they went on that losing streak last year. The defense, you could just throw all over that defense. So will they be consistent? So those are kind of the, the big questions when you look at the important players, I suppose. Uh, does Baker stay consistent? Does the secondary stay consistent? Um, I, I think... I'm fine. You know, I know I'm fine with the receivers. I'm, the running backs are going to be fine. Offensive line, that's kind of a question. Does it take a step up? I'm pretty confident that it does enough. Um, defensive line, I'm not really worried about. Some people worried about edge. I'm not really worried about it. Linebackers will be fine. Um, you know, so that that's kind of the biggest questions to, to determine how good the Buccaneers will be. Quarterback play, Baker Mayfield, secondary consistency, and the offense coordinator change going from a really good one to Liam Cohen. Um, so that is the, the big things to watch. Games to watch. Some early games here. I like the Lions in week two. The, the Buccaneers struggled to score enough against the Lions in the two games they played them. I thought Jared Goff, in the in the first time they played them in the regular season, I thought Jared Goff uh, had his the best game I've ever seen him have. Um, you know, maybe not statistically. There's probably higher... Uh, you know, stat games, but just, just, you know, how he handled pressure, everything. Uh, I thought he played very well. So the Bucks let that happen and they just, they scored six points in the second game around the playoffs. They kind of made it interesting. They kind of stuck around. I, they weren't consistent enough offensively. There was drives that started like they were going to be good. And they kind of just made one little mistake, you know, and, and it didn't, and they couldn't finish a drive. Uh, and that was mainly early. If they would have, if they would have, uh, Finish drives early. They they probably would have been more in this game. I they they played fairly well defensively, as good as they possibly could have in the, a game like that against a tough Lions offense. Um, you know, so where are they going to be at? Um, you know, just a. It feels like yesterday they played the Lions in the playoffs. So week two, not too far from now. Wh wh how how where are these teams going to be at? And the same thing with the Eagles. Uh, they completely outplayed the Eagles. They were the much better team. Just. Not too long ago, you know, in, in their in their most recent playoff win, obviously their playoff win. Um, so where will these teams be at? Be a good in that week four, right when the season kind of starts kicking the gear. Enough of the sloppiness, so it'll be kind of be a good le learning experience where these teams are at compared to end of last year. I like the Cowboys game in week sixteen. I think that could be a good game, a tough game. Both those teams could be fighting for a seed. Um, I think that I, I want to say the Eagle, or the Cowboys could win their division, the Bucks could win their division, but who are the favorites right now? Probably the Eagles and probably the Falcons. Are these teams fighting for that five seed, that six seed, that seven, even making the playoffs, that seven seed? Um, you know, because the NFC is becoming a little tougher because there's other teams like Seahawks, Bears that could be other teams as well that could be fighting for that low, the, you know, that one of those wild card seeds. So that game in week 16, there could be a lot on the line in that game. So that could be huge. And then some fans takes, Antronaut Baker keeping pace uh, with last season without Canales. Yeah, we had that question as well. Rushing attack improves or will it be hindered without Canales? Um, I, I think I think, yeah, I think, think it'll be the same at, at least. I, I'm not really worried about the running game. Bucky Irving, I'm excited about Bucky. He's, he could be really, really good. Like he's He is tough. He's physical. The contact balance, he can catch the ball and go. He's really good in the red zone around the goal line. Uh, Rashad White was racking up the touchdowns. He can catch the ball out of the air too. I think they complement each other very well. Uh, McMillan, yeah, I'm very curious. I was a huge, I was a huge Jalen McMillan fan because he's a guy that has the athleticism and, but mainly, bottom line is he gets open. He gets open consistently. But if you look back to not this past year, the where Washington had a great year, uh, but the year before. He was arguably the best receiver on Washington. Um, I would actually say he was. And that was with Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk. Uh, then this year he was dealing with some injuries, so that was kind of the only knock. He has a thin frame, I suppose. Uh, but when he played, he's outstanding. He's a ball, He's the guy you can get the ball to anywhere on the field. So that was. I was a big fan for those reasons. And then the buck strap that I'm, I'm like, Ah, how much are we going to be seeing him? I feel like he's right behind Chris Godwin. I think he needs to play in the slot a little bit. Of course, you could find ways to use both. But, yeah, that, that was the only thing. Like, yeah, it's a good place for receivers to go. He's a good one. 
I still think he's good, but how many snaps is he gonna is he gonna get? I was kind of thinking he was gonna go to a team like the Chiefs or the Bills, where he's gonna get a ton of snaps right away, and you know he's gonna be productive there. So he goes to the Bucks. So I was I'm also curious about the snap share. Uh, Whitehead pair at Winfield once again. Yeah, we talked about that. Excited about it. Kalaja Kansi is a guy that I, I thank you for bringing him up. I was kind of listing off guys that only should get better, the guys that only have upside. Kalaja Kansi, who remember how productive he was at Pittsburgh, getting after the quarterback. Um, and he, and he was fairly solid last year for the Bucks, so he could have a breakout. Another guy that's only going to get better on the interior next to Vita Vea. Levante keeping up with age. Yeah, he didn't look like he lost a step last year, like flying in the backfield. Uh, but it's going to hit him at some point. Could this be the year? Hopefully not. Uh, from R.S. Swimmer, best uh, nickelback safety group in the NFL with Winfield, Whitehead, Smith, um, Izian. Yeah, he had he had a really good year last year as well. Um, you know, Merriweather. Yeah, they got some sneaky guys. Uh, Tyke Smith they added, who's a safety that plays in the slot. Todd Bowles, a top five defensive mind in the NFL. Watch out for under the free agency. Um, oh yeah, Deloach uh, from from uh, Florida State. Uh, people were kind of worried that he was just a little undersized, but yeah, could he make an impact? Todd Bowles sometimes gets a little predictable with his cover three, a lot of it, but uh, it's starting to mix it up a little bit more down the stretch where they got better. So you know, hopefully keeping it fresh, mixing it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that's like uh, people. Yeah, some people probably think that's a really good secondary with the guys he mentioned. Some people think, yeah, they are so inconsistent. They gave up a lot to the air last year. Maybe they think the opposite. So that's something that's maybe a little debatable. Um, will win division with a far inferior roster to the Falcons. It's a little bold as well. Um, it is really balanced though, and that's probably what he's seeing. You look at the team, like it's very, very balanced. The Falcons got a, a new this, new that, so they need everything to click, but they have potential star players. I think Drake London's going to be a star player. I think B. John Robinson's going to be a star player. Kirk Cousins, we know we're going to get from Kirk Cousins. He gets the job done at a pretty high level. Is he a star player? No, but he gets, you know, Pitts has that potential. Uh, offensive line's really good. Uh, Jesse Bates, a star player, but, you know, Bucks can match that Winfield, of course. Uh, A.J. Terrell could be that guy. Uh, maybe the Bucks are a little bit better up front, like in the defense, you know, up in the defensive line, and maybe at linebacker as well. So that could be a good battle. Um, and then Adam will Baker take a step down without Canales? Yeah, a lot of people have that question. Running back committee, White Irving. I'm excited about it. I mentioned it. Um, two really solid backs that can really do everything. Uh, really fit today's game too. How big of a step up will Kalaja Kansi Yaya Diaby take after a good 2023 20, years? I'm very confident with Diaby, as you can tell. I think he's going to be really good. He's ahead of schedule right now. Uh, they have a plan for him. They weren't worried about adding too much to the edge because they they have a, they have a they have a potential set. Not right now yet, not yet, but they have a potential elite or great player at least. I think I think he like three years from now, I really think he could be that good because he is a freak dude, has the traits, has the production. He was Louisville wasn't using him all the right, but even when using him the wrong way at times, he still was a dude. Like you know, so he really fits this Todd Bowles defense. Can't see. I, I think I still think it could be a little up and down. You do worry about him in the run game. You do worry about him shedding blocks after they're already latched on. Um, when he won at Pittsburgh, it was winning with the first step, then getting after the quarterback. So he does rely on that first step, the first move a little bit. So maybe he's still, I mean, he's going to be productive. He's going to make flashy plays though. Who will step up at cornerback at the loss of Davis? Um, yeah, Zion McCollum could be that guy. Um, yeah, we'll see if some of the younger guys could step up potentially Bowles final year if the team doesn't make the playoffs. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. If they, if they take a step down. That's a good question. We'll see what happens there. If they, if yeah, it really depends on how they finish. And his prediction was seven and ten. So yeah, I think he could be fired if that's the case. Um, eight wins could be debatable if he keeps his job. Nine wins, I think he keeps his job. Anything better, definitely. Offense regresses noticeably, and defense takes a slight step down due to poor secondary. Mm. I think the defense takes a slight. I think a little step up just be, due to guys. Uh, progressing, and they add Whitehead to that safety group, so I think that helps it step up as well. Offense could regress, but there's talent, and the often the big thing for me that offense line is gonna be better. You know, look where it was last year, look where it is the year before. It's progressing the right path. They keep adding young players that are gonna continue to progress. You know, JJ has a uh, bold take of Baker as a significantly better season than Kirk Cousins. Uh, you know, due to injury, I don't think he's really saying that though. I think he's just saying he's just better. Maybe Kirk. Maybe Kirk can't do it um, without Kevin O'Connell, Justin Jefferson. 
I don't think that's the case, though. Kurt, you just know what you're going to – unless he's affected by the injury. That's definitely – could be the case, I guess. But you know what you're going to get from Kirk if he's healthy on the field. Like, this guy, he sees open receivers. He gets them the ball anywhere on the field. He's accurate. I think Drake London's really, really good. He's not Justin Jefferson. But I think Kirk actually – I mean, Drake London's on the path no matter who his quarterback was. He showed me that with Desmond Ritter. But I think Kirk Cousins helped Drake London progress even further. Um, and he's got weapons. So I do think that's a bold take, uh, especially because it's significantly better season than Kirk. Um I, if Kirk's, uh, you know, affected by the injury or if he does get injured, then yeah, maybe. Um, I think Penix could play well for the for the Falcons if uh, if if Kirk does get. We're off, we're off topic here, but uh, but yeah, what we learned in this video, though, the balance the balance of the Buccaneers, the balance, the and they got some young guys that really could step up, whether they're starters or not. Uh, they were heading in the right direction last year. Like, you know, I know they lost Canales, but even Bowles kind of got the defense, got the, got the team going in the right direction at the end of last year. So may, hey, maybe it's only up for here from here, but the Falcons are a serious challenge. It felt like they were a little challenging at times last year, even without Kirk Cousins, uh, and there's the new staff. So that's kind of the only thing there, but we will see. We only have two more videos to go in this series. Check out that playlist on the channel. We have a lot of important content to get to, including a top 100, um, before the season starts, I'm starting to get real excited about the NFL season coming up. We need it. Need it right now. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for their support. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.